Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The arc tangent function is continuous. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves of our definition of the arc tangent function. Let r be any real number and consider the following sequence. Then, we have shown that the sequence 2 to the n rn is convergent. And we define the value it converges to to be the arc tangent of r. And from here, we proved several properties of arc tangent, one of which is that arc tangent is an odd function. That is, the arc tangent of negative r is equal to the negative of arc tangent of r, for all real numbers r. And also, And also, we have, for all r greater than 0, these inequalities hold. In particular, if r is greater than 0, then r tangent of r is greater than 0. And it turns out, if r is less than 0, then the inequalities just get reversed. In particular, if r is less than 0, then r tangent of r is less than 0. Now, we also know that the r tangent of 0 is 0, which means if r is 0, then all of these guys are equal to zero. So if r is greater than or equal to zero, then these guys become weak inequalities. Similarly, if r is less than or equal to zero, then all of these guys become weak inequalities. Now a property that follows from this is this. So for all real numbers r, the absolute value of r tangent of r is equal to the r tangent of absolute value r. Right. To prove this, well, first of all, if r is greater than or equal to zero, then by this fact, the arc tangent of r is greater than or equal to zero. So, since arc tangent of r is greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of arc tangent of r is equal to arc tangent of r. But since r is greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of r is equal to r. And in the case where r is less than 0, well then, by this fact, we have that arc tangent of r is less than 0. So, the absolute value of arc tangent of r must be equal to the negative arc tangent of r. But since arc tangent is an odd function, we can move the negative sign inside the argument. But then, since r is less than 0, the absolute value of r is equal to negative r. And so, we see, no matter what r is, we have that the absolute value of r tangent of r is equal to r tangent of absolute value of r. And so that's why this property holds. And finally, another property of the r tangent function we proved was an addition formula, which is the following. Given any two real numbers, s and t, if s times t is less than 1, then this equality holds. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, to prove the arc tangent function is continuous, it would be really nice if we could first prove the following claim. We first claim that the absolute value of arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y for all real numbers x and y. It turns out from this, continuity will immediately follow. So to prove this, let's first give ourselves two arbitrary real numbers, x and y. From here, we split it up into two cases. Either negative xy is less than or equal to zero, or negative xy is greater than zero. Let's first consider the case negative xy is less than or equal to zero. Well, if negative xy is less than or equal to zero, then negative xy is less than one. So now, if we perform absolute value of arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y. Well, since arc tangent is an odd function, we can move the negative sign inside the argument. So we have this. But now, let's just apply the addition formula. In doing so, we'll take s to be x, we'll take t to be negative y. Well, in that case, we have that the arc tangent of x plus the arc tangent of negative y is equal to the arc tangent of x plus negative y, all over 1 minus x times negative y.
So we get this. But now let's just clean this up. We have x minus y all over 1 plus xy. But then, by this property, we can move the absolute value inside the argument. But then, we know that the absolute value of anything is greater than or equal to zero. So, by this fact, if we take r to be the absolute value of x minus y over 1 plus xy, well then it follows that the r tangent of absolute value of x minus y over 1 plus xy is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y over 1 plus xy. Right? But then, by properties of absolute values, we can rewrite this as the absolute value of the numerator over the absolute value of the denominator. But 1 plus xy is positive because we know since negative xy is less than or equal to 0, xy is greater than or equal to 0. So then if we add 1 on both sides, we get 1 plus xy is greater than or equal to 1. So 1 plus xy is positive, so we don't need the absolute values in the denominator. But from here, it follows that the reciprocal of 1 plus xy is less than or equal to 1. And if we multiply absolute value of x minus y on both sides of this inequality, we get this. So this guy is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y. And so we have shown that the absolute value of r tangent of x minus r tangent of y is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y. So this completes the case where negative xy is less than or equal to zero. Now let's consider the case that negative xy is greater than zero. Well, if negative xy is greater than zero, then xy is less than zero. But if x times y is less than zero, that means x and y must have opposite signs. So either x is negative and y is positive, or x is positive and y is negative. Right? Now, what happens if x is negative and y is positive? Well, in this case, since x is less than zero, we have, by this fact, that x is less than our tangent of x, which is less than zero. But also, since y is greater than zero, we have, by this fact, that zero is less than the r tangent of y, which is less than y. So, from this, it should make sense to expect that the absolute value of r tangent of x minus r tangent of y is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y. And to see that, well, what is absolute value of r tangent of x minus r tangent of y? Well, since r tangent of y is greater than r tangent of x, this guy must be equal to r tangent of y minus r tangent of x. And from here, since r tangent of y is less than y, if we subtract r tangent of x on both sides, we get r tangent of y minus r tangent of x, is less than y minus r tangent of x. And then, notice, we have that x is less than r tangent of x. Well, if we multiply negative 1 on both sides, we get negative r tangent of x is less than negative x. So if we add y on both sides, we get y minus r tangent of x is less than y minus x. So this guy is less than y minus x. But y is bigger than x, so certainly this is just equal to acid value of x minus y. And so we have shown that the acid value of r tangent of x minus r tangent of y is less than or equal to acid value of x minus y. In fact, it's a strict inequality in this case. So this is what happens if x is less than 0 is less than y. So what happens if y is less than 0 is less than x? Turns out you get a really similar argument. And so we have considered the case negative xy is less than or equal to 0 and negative xy is greater than 0. No matter which case we have, we have that absolute value of r tangent of x minus r tangent of y is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y. And so our claim is proven.
Now we're going to prove that the arctangent function is continuous. To prove that the arctangent function is continuous, what that means is we want to prove that the arctangent function is continuous at every real number. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number, c. And from here, we proceed to prove that the arctangent function is continuous at c. What does it mean for the arctangent function to be continuous at c? Well, by definition of continuity, it means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x in the real numbers, if absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of arctangent of x minus arctangent of c is less than epsilon. So, to prove this, since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. Well, the claim is, if we take delta to be epsilon, then this statement will be true. So, taking delta to be epsilon, we proceed to prove, for all x in the real numbers, if absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then absolute value of arctangent of x minus arctangent of c is less than epsilon. So to prove that, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number x, such that absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. From here, we want to prove that the absolute value of arctangent of x minus arctangent of c is less than epsilon. So let's start off by writing the left-hand side. By our preliminary result, this guy is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus c. But by assumption, absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, and delta is equal to epsilon. So we have that absolute value of arctangent of x minus arctangent of c is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have proven this statement, which proves that the arctangent function is continuous at c. And since c was an arbitrary real number, this means we have proven that the arctangent function is continuous at every real number. In other words, the arctangent function is continuous. And so this completes the proof. Now, because arctangent satisfies this property, arctangent is what we call a Lipschitz function. And a Lipschitz function is as follows. To say that f is a Lipschitz function means that there is some positive constant l such that absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to l times absolute value of x minus y for all x and y in the domain of the function. Now, it turns out every Lipschitz function is uniformly continuous, and every uniformly continuous function is continuous. So yeah, not only is arctangent a continuous function, but it's also uniformly continuous. And we haven't talked about uniform continuity yet, but we'll talk about that in future videos. But anyways, you see that we can generalize this further if we wanted to. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.